I checked their labor costs, you know, wages. It's about 20 to 30,000 won per hour. Hello, this is error. Recently at Figure AI, we showcased an impressive video featuring Helix, a military robot. Two robots were interacting, organizing a refrigerator and performing various tasks. Not long after, Helix is now accelerating real-world logistics applications. They showed a video of something done very quickly in the real world. It was quite impressive. Want to see it? So, the process is sequential. The robot moves in, gets its hands ready just like a human, and then starts sorting packages. When there are various logistics, items, it visually identifies them and organizes them by moving each item to its designated location. It's quite fascinating to watch. However, it seems like this isn't yet applied to actual logistics. It appears more like an empty bag, and the shapes are somewhat restricted primarily consisting of white items with the occasional box here and there. By showing how each part of the system moves simultaneously and sorts items in real time, it effectively demonstrates that this advanced technology can indeed be utilized in logistics management centers, such as the parcel delivery centers we are all familiar with. It highlights that even delicate and thin packaging materials can be handled with precision, showcasing the high sensitivity and dexterity of the system. The robot makes decisions by looking at the camera itself. It cannot just pick things up randomly. It needs to know where everything is and find the barcode on its own before before making a decision. They presented these details quite thoroughly, so let's take a closer look at the actual content. In this episode, we emphasized four technologies, with the first being stereo vision, which not only uses a single camera, but multiple cameras. This highlights its capability to comprehend the three-dimensional environment. It is crucial to accurately determine the dimensions, shape, and position of packages and parcels, as this ensures they can be effectively handled, lifted, and located. The system known as System 1, which I discussed in the previous Helix video, is worth revisiting. In that video, I showcased a model that directly places items into the refrigerator. In my previous explanation, I referred to System 1 and System 2, where System 2 is responsible for handling more challenging tasks, processing them at a slower pace. It then temporarily stores this information in a potential vector space before transferring it to System 1 for rapid responses. This concept was also elaborated on by a renowned commenter. Someone also explained Daniel Kahneman's book Thinking Fast and Slow, covering Systems 1 and 2. Meanwhile, it can be inferred that the Helix robot was developed by mimicking the concepts of System 1 and System 2, which allows it to respond quickly while also being capable of slow, deliberate thinking by observing internally. One particularly noteworthy aspect is the support for understanding 3D space in System 1, which is quite significant. Now, it is important to pay attention to the concept of visual proprioception, which is an intriguing aspect of this technology. This feature allows each robot to autonomously perform self-calibration, meaning they can make the necessary adjustments on their own. Furthermore, when we consider multiple robots working together in a system, this capability enables them to seamlessly coordinate and interact with each other. When engaging in collective activities, it is assumed that self-calibration allows for harmonious movement. Additionally, a new sports mode has been introduced. By utilizing a simple test time speed up technique, it was reported that they could increase the speed while maintaining the existing success rate and dexterous hand movements. Let's take a more detailed look at this. If you take a look at the center of Helix's forehead, you'll see two cameras. The top one, known as the catop camera, and the bottom one called the button camera. The top camera is primarily for forward-looking views, while the bottom one is focused on observing the robot's hands. So, System 1 is designed to move very quickly, instantly observing the scene in real time. The vision backbone is composed of an incredibly complex complex model with 30 million parameters. After observing, the system processes the actual movement actions at a frequency of 200 hertz, enabling it to respond with 200 movements per second. This system operates at a frequency of 200 hertz, as shown above. The component referred to as System 1 is equipped with just a single camera, making it monocular. Initially there was only one camera, but with the introduction of stereo vision processing, it now has the ability to perceive space in three dimensions. This enhancement allows for a more comprehensive understanding of spatial hierarchies as you can observe both cameras work together by processing each image's feature tokens separately, then merging them into a stereo network. This means that each element is transformed and handled individually before being combined into a unified whole. From a multi-scale perspective, various pieces of information are integrated to create a more detailed and comprehensive understanding. With a large amount of data being processed simultaneously, it can evaluate details with greater precision. By integrating the two cameras, it effectively addresses the issue. Furthermore, the idea of cross-robot transfer is particularly fascinating. As I mentioned previously, the these robots utilize the same AI model, allowing multiple robots to implement a unified policy. Each Helix robot might have different hardware configurations, perceive varied visuals, and operate in distinct environments. Traditional manual robots required individual calibration for each unit, which was a labor-intensive and meticulous task. In contrast, the Helix robot features an innovative online self-calibration system, making this process much more efficient. So now you see the picture below, right? By directly observing with its eyes, the robot can understand things like where its wrist is and what is happening. Each 
robot will have two built-in cameras, right? Top and bottom. And at the end of this process, the robot's hands can estimate their own positions or visually understand their current situations to self-calibrate. This means that in an actual factory setting, multiple humanoid robots can be deployed and they can self-calibrate online, significantly enhancing the efficiency of the entire operation. It's quite efficient that the same policy can be applied to multiple robots in a situation where it takes much less time. So, the following content discusses how using stereo vision and multi-scale approaches significantly improves visual representation throughput. Additionally, it covers data curation, which is the ability to select data. We receive data from a wide variety of sources and channels, do not we? When the data is received, it undergoes a cleansing process where the noise is also removed. Tasks like labeling and data curation are essential. We've noticed that when data is curated properly, it significantly boosts efficiency and performance. As you can observe, the robot moves smoothly. It can analyze its environment and determine the precise moment it needs to act. The Helix robot, for instance, utilizes sophisticated VLM technology. As mentioned before, it involves vision, language, and action. Essentially, this means deciding the optimal timing, method, and position for moving its hand. It's about optimizing the path, planning the movement, and precisely grasping the object with accurate motion. At some point, it needs to grab it perfectly because right Right now, I am simplifying the process. Although it might seem simple, I'm actually moving. I need to transfer items from one side to the other using the conveyor belt. This requires quickly interpreting the visual information from the side. Then, move the item at a speed of 200 Hz to grab and relocate it. They claim that with just 8 hours of curated, high-quality demonstration data, the robot can perform tasks with great skill and flexibility. Earlier, I brought up the sports mode, which uses a method called test time speed up. This enables acceleration from 0% to 100% while keeping the throughput consistent, allowing for quicker operations. In logistics hubs like Kupang or in Chinese centers such as Temu, a large number of people are involved in handling logistics. Shall we delve deeper into this? I observed the sorting process at a Temu warehouse, and while I am not sure if the workers were shirtless to prevent theft, it was quite an impressive sight. If you look on YouTube, you can see this massive volume of items being sorted, although it seems a bit slower compared to the Helix robot. When comparing the speed, humans are indeed much faster than the Helix robot. I looked up the labor costs specifically how much it costs. Since labor costs in China are quite low, let's look at the US first. I searched to find out how to reduce costs at a logistics center in the US and found that the hourly wage for a warehouse worker is roughly between 20,000 and 30,000 Korean won. Of course, this can vary. I found some news articles about this. If they are true, 74.6% of Chinese logistics and delivery workers make between 500,000 and 900,000 Korean won per month. That converts to hourly wages of about 3,000 to 5,000 Korean won. This is is about one-third to one-fifth of what workers in the United States earn. So you can see that the cost is almost one-eighth to one-tenth cheaper than in the United States. So considering the labor costs at these factories, warehouses, and logistics centers like Kupang and Temu, wouldn't it be cheaper to introduce these robots? In China, monthly labor costs are about 600,000 to 900,000 Korean won. Let's round it to 1 million Korean won. So in the US, it's about $3,000, around 4 million won. In China, it's roughly 1 million won. But human workers can't work 24 hours hours a day, right? Robots can operate 24 hours a day. So if we calculate based on the US, it would be around $3,000 a month, which totals approximately $40,000 a year. Assuming a person works 8 hours a day, you would need $40,000 annually. Currently, Tesla's robots are mentioned to be around $20,000. After purchasing this robot, if you can keep it running continuously for 24 hours a day, wouldn't it be possible to easily recoup your investment? It runs 24 hours a day. Of course, there are costs like electricity and charging. Still, don't you think we can compete at this level? Hiring one, two, three, or four people costs at least $40,000 per year. But with $20,000, you just need to buy one and keep it running. It may be cheaper in places like China, but in the end, this will... Humanoid robots like Helix can seamlessly take over tasks that humans perform without requiring a complete overhaul of the factory factory's infrastructure. This is one of the major advantages of humanoid robots. Additionally, there are similar robots available in China. These robots, such as Geek Plus, are not designed to be humanoids. They are specifically built to move very quickly and perform designated tasks efficiently. However, when there are changes in the factory environment, these robots, including Geek Plus, face significant limitations and constraints. For example, they are restricted to moving only on the ground. From the perspective of replacing human workers, it's clear that it's not a straightforward process. Humanoids, with their ability to self 
calibrate can adjust more efficiently to minor changes in their tasks compared to other types of robots. Starting with an investment of $20,000, it's conceivable that updates and adjustments can be made more effortlessly without additional expenses. You can observe similar implementations at Foxconn, where robotic arms are employed. As a nation renowned for its robotics industry, we have extensively adopted these practices as well. Humans have already been replaced in many areas, but some tasks still need a human touch. Now, humanoid robots are stepping in to fully take over these roles, making factory automation truly automated. Moreover, nowadays, when you visit places like Ashley or other stores, you can see robots serving. Nowadays, even tasks like cooking and food preparation can be handled by humanoids. Moreover, in the medical field, there are areas requiring precision where they can also be utilized. It looks like society will undergo significant transformations as automation gradually takes over. With that in mind, I have shared the latest developments about Helix Logistics, 